you know, the market, the market potential, the market is literally untapped. I mean, DMARC as a service is in its infancy, you know, only less than 5% of domains worldwide are secured by DMARC. So an MSP or a service provider wanting to get into the business, it's just untold potential. There's all the money they want to go get if they start up a DMARC practice. Yeah, I know it's, it's like a, it's a big gap there, isn't it? And it was on the top of everyone's mind back at the start of the year when Gmail and Yahoo start yeah. to enforce stricter policies around their email services. Yeah, it's surprising. I still have MSPs come to me today. They still don't know what's going on. I'm like, wow, you might want to pay attention. You're in the IT business, but it happens. Uh, but you know, they're, they're getting on board. We have seen massive growth the past year and a half. Where do you find, like, from the MSP perspective, that's our audience. And my own personal perspective on DMARC is like, it gives you better deliverability. And I almost feel as though it's like something that a marketing manager would worry about more than anything else. But yeah. from an MSP's perspective, where's the, the pain point that they're solving for their client base? Uh, so their clients, emails, just general conversations, even invoicing is now getting put in spam or deleted or, or just rejected outright. You know how this goes, right? If anything goes wrong with their email, whose fault is it? It's your fault as an IT operator, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they have to have DMARC. They don't know about it. So as an IT services professional, you need to get in front of that conversation and say, hey, this is a new protocol. It used to be optional. It's no longer optional. We have to get you from here to here. I'm here to get in front of that conversation for you before you have real problems. And most of them, the MSPs come to us and go, Hey, our tickets are going up. Our customers are having problems with deliverability, something about DMARC. I'm like, we well, got this, no problem. We'll get it fixed. So, you know, as a trusted service, IT service provider, you're supposed to be in front of this for your customer, right? To yeah. see, tell what's coming down the pipe that they need to be aware of that can have severe business impact. Common communications have been put in spam, right? Email marketing. You might as well throw that in the garbage. That's not getting through. And then invoicing. I've heard dozens and dozens of stories. Hey, our invoices are going into spam now. We're getting yeah. slow, late paid, no paid. And you know, for a small business that will, you know, your finances yeah. drop as a no pay or slow pay, it's going to cripple the business. And so as an IT operator, you need to talk to the business owner about that risk. This is why you're doing it. This is why you're paying me. Or otherwise, these consequences will come upon you and have some business impact. And it's really, you know, IT, you know, DMARC used to be optional, so you could do it, you know, for some protection, you know, that's what it was invented for. But now for a fact, it will have business impact, you know, on your invoicing, email marketing, communications, and most small businesses can't withstand that uh, because they, you know, there's so much transaction going on online. And you have to have this stuff up. Okay. So it's like those transactional emails, like a business application emails that, you know, and that's going to hit like the cash flow and things well, like that. And business. Ticketing, partner emails, and your vital communication. You, you, you buy a car, it might be new, but it might break down and you still have to get it fixed. Right. So this protocol is in place. You know, it's new. You, you think you're paying the IT operator a monthly fee, but this is a new service. It still has to be fixed. So they still have to pay for it. Uh, and turn it into a monthly service. And I walk through the, with all the IT operators, I walk through how to do all that. So from the marketing perspective, like that's my personal experience on this. I'm going to go back to this because I have put in place DMAR and the other one, I think was SPF, something like that at the domain level. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, you know, there's some adjustments that I had to make to our DNS records right. that we're sending out. So that's the, it was a manual task that I had to do. Where does a service like EZT more come into this? And it's just some, you know, configuration of the domain. What's the thing that you're solving? Yeah. Um, what's your platform? It's more than just, oh, I put one configuration in and done. That would be like saying I configured a, wall, a firewall one time and I never have to watch it again. That that's not, that's not reality because. As a service provider, you know, and I know that your customer will add new sources, new marketing platform, new invoicing, new this. And if they add it and your policy set to reject or quarantine and that new source is not configured correctly, now you've just quarantined or rejected all their new invoicing. Right. And so without a reporting system that says, Hey, this popped up. What is this? Hey, Bob's mechanic shop. Did you add, you know, HubSpot? Oh yeah. I forgot to tell you, Scott. 
Oh, okay, great. I see it. I'll get it fixed. Send you an invoice. Keep moving. Right. So there's, there's new sources added. There's sources, old sources that change sometimes. Right. And so if you don't know, then your configuration goes down. Also, people change their website, which have lead, lead forms. And so when that DNS changes to that new website, now your lead forms uh, start failing. And then there are threats that show on this platform. So you as an IT operator want to see those threats because you're going to see the IP address from where it's coming from. So if you provide firewall or endpoint services, you know, especially with firewalls, maybe you want to blacklist that IP because you can see it's trying to spoof that domain. And so maybe you want to harden your posture around the security. Yeah. You know, so there's a number of reasons why you not only fix it, but then you need monthly reporting just to make sure. And so yeah. I've, I've sat in your chair, right? So I already know, I already know what time it is. I already know yeah. that you can't set it and forget it. You must watch it just like you watch endpoint protection, you know, firewalls, antivirus, you got to keep it up to date and you got to be monitoring it because, you know, if something changes and you're not watching it, that, then this thing goes haywire. So it's having a, a proactive approach to your email deliverability. Okay. It just is good news for all of us in the IT services industry. You know, you can go get more revenue and profitability in your current base, and then you can use platforms like ours to go market to new prospects and new customers. We have marketing built into the program, both in the platform and as outside resources. Are you an IT business or a managed service provider? Get a free listing on MSP near me for your technology business. Get more traffic to your website and acquire a free juicy backlink to help improve your SEO. Just visit mspnear.me and add your company for free. Yeah, so the platform is going to be very easy to use for your, for your service providers and anybody watching in the audience. Lots of dashboards, analytics, reports, simple to navigate panels over here and click through stuff. Very intuitive. One of the most robust DMARC platforms out there for the IT operator. Setting up the platform, you can set it up, uh, most importantly, in a multi-tenant fashion. So in this okay. piece, you add their customers in here and then put domains just under a customer's names. And so what they'll see is these domain groupings. This would be like a customer grouping. And so you would have all of your customers listed here, and then you could click on one customer and then just go right to their reporting statistics and see, you know, exactly what's going on and if anything needs to be fixed, you could access every single feature from right here on the platform. That's just a little bit of a shortcut, um, okay. but it's a true multi-tenant platform. It's also a multi-user, so you can add users to the platform, give them, you know, it's permissions based. So what they can do, what they can't do, what they can see, what they can't see, reporting, alerting, everything the IT operator needs to run the business right out of the box, it's ready to go. Wow. So using the platform is going to be as simple as just adding domains and then looking at reports. If I type in AAA.com, which is the car service in America, yep. and click add, the platform is going to give you several options to add these domains to the DNS. One is doing it manually with a CNAME record that will activate some automated features in terms of automated DMARC changing and things like that. But it'll give you step-by-step -step exactly what you need to put into the DNS to report. We also have a new feature that was just activated last week mm -hmm. called the Direct Connect feature. And so what it will do is allow you to just push up. And so when you uh, set up the system now, and this is a demo system, so it's not live, but uh, you would be able to activate this feature right here, uh, configure your DNS one time, the first time, and then every subsequent domain that comes through on that DNS, you would just be able to push a button and it will automatically send the okay. DNS updates over there. Mess with the DNS records manual. Okay. Yeah. The bottom line is there's lots of automation in here. And so what you'll see once you do that is you'll be able to see for the domain and any subdomain that follows what's compliant, what's non-compliant and threat. So you put it in the domain, it will pick up that domain and all subdomains automatically and show you what is compliant, what is non-compliant, where there's threats. And this is really the meat of the platform, how you monetize services and MORs from all this information. So under the compliant, very simple, these sources are fixed correctly. You're going to see a lot of green, a lot of deliverability, lots of passing. Not much work to be done right here. You see everything's configured. The non-compliant is where your the operators need to pay attention because this is where there's work to be done. Okay. Uh, you drop down uh, these domains and subdomains, you can see 
multiple sending sources that are not configured correctly. So you can drop down on any one of these sending sources and see there's lots of failures this time, lots of deliverability problems, misalignments on SPF and DCAM. This is where there's consulting work to be done. So if you're, you're, you're you know, your viewers provide services in the industry, this is where they'll yeah. write a services work order. And then you got to get it fixed with our platform. One big differentiator is this little configuration module right here. This little gear icon, they will click on, it will tell them what the sending source is. And there are over 1500 sending sources documented in the platform. That's so fine. providers no longer have to go search this information. Remember time is money in the MSP doing more with less. So we're going to automate that search and informational process give you all the documentation on exactly how to get this source aligned. SPF and DKIM are not configured correctly. You must get these configured. So you will click on the configuration status and you will get a configuration guide. And this well, will get okay. by step process of exactly how to get the source aligned. Uh, you will simply just put whatever it says to put into the DNS records, save those records and you're done. You've just successfully set up SendGrid. And so you can see how easy that would make it for the IT operator. Uh, you could put five hours of profit in your pocket and go on to the next domain or the next customer. Rinse and repeat. It's going to be very profitable from a services perspective. So that's one way to, to commit to a monetization strategy. Uh, of course, you're going to want to monitor it ongoing. And this threat unknown tab will show your you know, service providers where there's threats against their customers' domains. And so you can see this unknown sending source right here trying to send out 30,000 emails against our domain, okay. you know, these flags, they're coming out of Russia, Great Britain, some other places. So, you know, they're trying to create fraud in some manner, right? Trying to spoof the customer's domains. So this is a good thing for your IT operators to show their customers, right? Scott, when they say, Hey, why are we paying you another 30, 40, 50 quid euro, whatever a month to, to monitor this, they can clearly show their customer you're under a threat. And for us to, to keep you safe, we have to monitor it on an ongoing basis and that costs time and materials. And so now uh, you can monetize it from a monthly perspective and, uh, you know, okay. service. Like, real, like we're looking at this thing, like realistically, like what, you know, what, what could the MSP do to solve that? You know, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of things. Number one, you want to get all of your non-compliant moved over to compliant. First yeah. thing, this is a process. Easy one, yeah. DMARC journey, then once you get it, everything to compliant, there should be no more invalid or valid sources that are not configured correctly. So you move your policy from nothing to quarantine to reject. And you actually see like the spoofing attempt with our policy. We have our policy set to reject. So you can see these emails are not being delivered. They're not even being put into spam, right? That was what DMARC was invented for. If somebody tries to spoof your domain, what do I do? I have a policy of nothing. That's a bad idea. Oh, I right? see. Okay. Quarantine it. That's a better idea. It'll, but it will still land in spam. And we all know people sometimes go into spam and click on the wrong link and yeah. then for reject, which rejects it outright at the DNS source. That's the best idea. That'll give your providers the highest level of deliverability and security. So you okay. can see it being not delivered. Now, if you also provide firewall services, I'd take note of that IP address right there. That'd be the first thing I'd do and put it in my spam filter and my DNS filters and uh, blacklisting on firewalls. And I'd make sure that IP address is not getting through, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, they're trying and that IP address are probably sniffing around in other areas. These are all the attempts that happen, but because we've got all this set up, none of this stuff's been delivered and we can take action with these IP addresses. A lot of customers are like, just keep us safe, but some want to, want to know the reasoning behind it. You know, yeah. you show them this and see that the number of attacks that are trying to hit their, their domain and their email, you know, when you ask your customer, Hey, do you want me to protect you against it? Yes or no. Common <laughs> sense is going to tell you they're going to say yes. Okay. Can these reports that you're showing here, can they be automated and broken down per client? Yeah. yeah so we have an automated reporting feature and they can simply set that up. It's their white label, private capable from my domain. And so if I just print a general one, uh, I can show you what they look like. Uh, they're PDF format, pretty slick. Uh, and, and they'll give for any one domain, a group of domains for a customer or all domains for any reporting period that you want. It'll show you the overall su summary. It'll give you the listing of what was compliant, 
what was compliant, also what is non-compliant, where there's threats against your customers' domains, forwarded sources, those kind of things. So yeah, all the reporting automation is already built in for your customers to take advantage of. Okay. Excellent. So and you've got, I'm looking at your tool just now, you've got using DMARC. I mean, this may be going off topic a little bit. There's also something that I'm seeing here called Easy Sender. What's yes. That? Well, del- yeah, this is the deliverability tool that we released earlier, uh, late last year and, and really getting ramped up for the service providers. So people that really focus on deliverability, large outbound senders, marketing campaigns, mm-hmm. uh, it's what's called a domain warm-up tool. So it has multiple, oh, yeah, okay. you know, automation, cleaning up email roles. That's, that's the first thing you can't send above a very tiny percent of bad emails or the service providers will damage your, your domain reputation. So all of this goes in with that inbox placement, warm up services that does some, you know, artificial intelligence engagement to up your scores. So that's, that's a secondary add on uh, tool that we have available. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I've got, I'm using one of them at the moment, but it's for a completely different purpose, the warm up tool. What other areas might, that we need to cover here that, you know, you met with many MSPs in this tool. And the thing about our the questions correctly. Yeah, no, the thing about our program is it's not just a tool. It's an overall program. It includes every single feature on the platform has what's called a documentation feature guide built in. So if you're not sure what you're doing, you can click on this little question mark right here. You know, we'll open up a documentation panel. It'll tell you what this feature is. We have video training for every single feature on the platform so that they can just watch a video and know what this feature does, how to use it, how to implement it, install technical feature guides built into the platform. If they really want to deep dive into it, they'll have this type of information built in. Our program comes with all the video training that'll show them how to install and use every single feature on the platform. It comes with all that implementation training that you see there. It comes with technical training, so they'll be able to get on with engineers on a call who will walk through the platform, show the features, how to use it. And then of course they have technical support. So if you have a specific issue uh, about a configuration that you can't figure out, they'll always be able to click this help button in the upper right hand corner, open up a ticket with an engineer and an engineer will get on and solve the problem for them and keep them moving. Solving for DMARC is great. Making Mm -hmm. money, solving for DMARC is even better. So we know your IT operators want to make money solving for DMARC. So we include a marketing program, uh, okay. job marketing toolkit, email marketing, social media marketing, event marketing, and a partnership press release. There's all kinds of sales enablement. This is, is there any like case studies you've got or MSBs that are actively selling this type of thing? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We've got thousands of MSPs on the program and, you know, we'll sign up another thousand plus again this year. It's just been a massive move to DMARC and we really help the, the IT operator, you know, get on the platform in terms of our service provider offering. We have a direct offering of the service provider offering, you know, we get you full, full support, how to solve for it and go make some money in the process. Okay. So what did the commercials look? Right, from a partner perspective, I mean, or is it based on email volume? How, how is that calculated? Yeah, no, we have just a traditional MSP pricing model. Are your listeners all MSPs? They are. Yeah. So our MSP program is $10 per sending domain per month, uh, a minimum of 10 domains to start. So it's okay. only a hundred dollars a month to start. It's month to month. There is no long-term contracts and you know, it comes with 5 million email volume included. We can always, you know, adjust that as needed. Uh, okay. but 99% of MSPs do not go with a 5 million limit. Well, you know, that's your, most of the customers we know are SMBs that just don't do that type of volume, but uh, occasionally we'll, we'll have somebody outside that, but not very often. So it, it includes the entire program every single feature on the platform, all the training, all the documentation, all the support, all the onboarding and training, all the sales and marketing automation all come with the program. Excellent. So it does sound like it's a very flexible, there's no contract, it's like that. It's just a minimum of 10 domains and you don't have to worry too much unless it's a huge volume of emails. No. When we originally intended to lower the bar to entry, right? We don't want anybody to miss out on the program because the price would be too high, but this is the scale play, right? So if you're charging 20 or 30 a domain and you only got 10 domains, nobody's getting, you know, making their house payment on that. But once you get to a hundred domains, 300 domains, 700 domains, 
if you're making 20 or 30 a domain, just do the math on what we're going to put to your bottom line every single month as a service provider. And if you think about it, there's over 350 million sending domains in the world today that all need to be secured with DMAR and less than 5% of them are secured. So yeah. the market potential is literally un untapped and can, you know, yeah. it's not like, not too late to get in on the, what we used to call the gold rush here in America. <laughs> and you guys are selling the shovels. Excellent. Okay, Mike. Hey, it was really great to meet you. Got, um, look around the tool. What's the best way to get started with you guys? Yeah, you can go to our website, easydmark.com. There's free trials. There's contact us forms. You can certainly email me directly if you need to, mike at easydmark.us. Uh, but there's multiple ways to, to get in contact with us. Free trials. We give you all the information up front to, to know how to use the platform and, and, uh, can launch it and get you going. Excellent. Well, appreciate your time today. And I, I do have a link. You can use my link, guys, if you're listening or you're watching us on YouTube, wherever you might be. And it should be underneath the show notes.